This week, the British National Party has been attacked by two senior members of IRA Sinn Féin. Martina Anderson, MEP, used the European Parliament to accuse us of being involved in stirring up trouble at protests over the decision to marginalise the Union flag at Belfast City Hall. Martin McGuinness then repeated the demonisation trick in Stormont, accusing us of orchestrating violent protests. What a nerve! Anderson served 13 years for her central role in the IRA's mainland bombing campaign that brought death and destruction to the streets of London, Birmingham, Warrington and far too many other places. An IRA bomber now playing at being a respectable politician. Likewise, Martin McGuinness. The man is responsible for dozens of brutal murders, including the sectarian killings of Protestant farmers and Catholics who dared to fraternise. Yet these two convicted violent criminals have the front to whine about us supposedly being involved in illegal demonstrations. Sinn Féin sometimes make propaganda noises about reconciliation and respecting the rights of the loyalist community. But these words are hypocritical and empty while they continue their long war by other means against their hated Protestant enemy. The ruthless and one-sided exploitation of old grievances, the relentless pressure to marginalise and suppress an orange culture that even Jerry Adams confirmed in his autobiography was a perfectly normal and unobjectionable part of his innocent childhood. The house by house, street by street, breaking of windows, daubing of slogans and intimidation by which Republican thugs in areas like the Short Strand continually ethnic cleanse Protestant working class families. While the current violence was sparked by the Republicans' latest move against the loyalist tradition and the highly charged symbolism of the flag, what useless unionist leaders like Peter Robinson have totally failed to get over is the way in which this is just one example of the long war against the identity and the right to exist of their people. That's no doubt because they've so singularly failed to do anything to stop it. It is anger over the one-way street concessions, the Republicans' relentless cultural war and ethnic cleansing of working-class Protestants that has brought, been brought to a head by the flag issue. And the anger and the violence it produces will not go away until the injustice is recognised and the peace process is applied fairly and across the board, with worthwhile concessions to the loyalist community as well as to the nationalists. At present, Loyalists look at all the apologies, all the investigations, the vast majority of parade commission decisions, the blind eye that's turned by the police, media and politicians alike to the daily intimidation and attacks against residents of areas such as the Lower Newtonards Road. All they see is a one-way street and they know that if they allow themselves to be pushed further down that one-way street, they will end up losing everything. This has to stop. Peace can only be genuine and lasting if both sides give. Both sides compromise. Both sides really commit to peace as an end in itself, rather than as merely another form of war. That's why there's no point Peter Robinson condemning the violence, because it's his failure that has led to the desperation that is creating the violence. We in the British National Party don't want violence either, but neither will we stand idly by while surrender and Marxist republicanism subject and oppress a people who've stood by the rest of our United Kingdom whenever we've needed them. That's why the British National Party in Northern Ireland will be rolling out a positive, peaceful campaign to give constructive leadership and to help the Loyalist community launch and maintain an effective resistance to their dispossession and to secure the future of the British identity and community in Northern Ireland, not just for this year or for 10 years' time, but forever.